Hey, 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 and welcome. My name is Darkstalker, and I am here to teach you how to, to play a beat cake of a man in Smash. Maybe you're new to this game and trying to find a character that gels with your style, or you're a little more experienced and looking to pick up a cool, stylish secondary. Well, regardless, I'm here to help you and on your road to victory. This will be a full breakdown of Terry going through his normal specials, combos, matchups, setups, and whatever else that makes you a top player in this game. Without further ado, let's rock! first question you might ask is, why? Why Terry? Couldn't I pick up a character like Joker instead? To that I say, there are some positives to using this lovable hunk from South Terry. The biggest and most apparent reason is that Terry is a big, beefy boy, making him have one of the biggest and highest defense in the game. If you were just to trade blows back and forth with any other character, you'd probably win every single time. Your normals aren't nothing to sneeze at either. You got big old muscly arms and legs that can outrange and outprioritize most of the other casts in the mid-range game. On top of that, you got great special moves. Some of the best in the game, in fact. Relatively speaking, high damage and fast frame data, so what else could you ask for? Well, the answer lies in his frame data, that most people look over due to not really understanding his frame data real well. In short, Terry's moves are very bad on whip, leaving him open to for a very long time. This makes footsies, which would be one of his strongest points, unnecessarily risky and annoying. Big body stature also gives way to many problems within itself. And due to his weight, he's very easy to combo, <clears throat> making him an easy combo food for most other characters. And has one of the worst initial dashes in the game, so he would be easier to stuff out because it's 10 frames and it's very easy to shield him. And let and let me tell you guys. The, the Pally matchup is so much fun. And coupled with the fact his disadvantage is on the lower end, makes most people underestimate him. But trust me, they are wrong. Harry has the unique traits of having two sets of special moves a normal version and an input version. The input versions are far superior than the normal B versions. As they have gained special properties on them, like bigger hitboxes, invincibility, and sporting better, greater shield stun. These can be activated by simply doing the motion. It's crucial to get these down to lead to new, new combo routes and very high damage, whilst also minimizing misinfluence in your play. Before I get to the actual meats and potatoes of the actual video with the mold, I would like to go over the actual alts of Terry. Because I think these are very important compared to like the rest of the video. <laughs> so if I'm any good at like editing, right? I'll probably like have it on the video right now. Yeah, if you see this, if you see that black alt, that's mine. The sick alt, that's mine. And you're giga chat if you're actually using that. Without further ado, let's start. Alright, here we are, starting up with Terry's normals, both grounded and aerial attacks. We'll be reviewing the hitboxes on each normal's frame data and usage. 
I will address that certain moves in Terry's kit like fair, back air, and smash attacks cannot be cancelled. This isn't <laughs> this isn't terrible movie. Let's start off with the tried and true jab sequence. Jab one has three frames of startup and active for one frame. Minus six on the shield and a special cancel. This shares a two-way tie for Terry's fastest normal next to his transition into jab two. Initially, you'd be thinking it's just a standard rapid jab hit that hits in front of him really well, right? However, this hitbox hits more low than two. Since the hitbox runs against the underside of his hand. This makes it much more of a preemptive anti-air. Good at stuffing out opponents who are about to jump, but not so good at catching the opponents in the air. But this jab is one of the best jabs in the game due to the insane frame data of this move. It makes it a wonderful low risk poke and one of the your best dash, dashing normals for space control. Dash back jab being your best retreating option. However, jab one will whiff on characters with a low crouch animation, such as Wii Fit, Kirby, and Snake. So keep that in mind before throwing this move out all really nilly. Jab two is a great combo move. Starting up on frame three and four, active for three frames, minus 17 on shield, and it's also a special hazard. This move is your hip firm after hitting jab 1, which links frame 1 into this move, making it a strong frame trapping tool. I'd like to mention that both jab 1 and jab 2 have tipper effects, similar to Marsh's. After I like to call the tipper bonuses, these tipper bonuses give hit advantage if you land the tipper hitbox on his fist. It'll draw your opponent closer to you and give you more plus frames to confirm into bigger and better hit confirms. As a great stagger pressure tool on shield. But I'll go over those when we go over combos and um, shield pressure. Do a niche move. Jab 3 is actually a really good combo ender. Depending on where you're spacing, it actually is really good to have a um, combo ender that actually launches to the platform. This is another way to counteract SDI. You should really not be using it in block strings due to it being minus 19 if you whiff it. So basically, if you ever use it, only use it as a failsafe. But you can get some cheeky mix-ups with down tilt to chase someone trying to roll away. So it's a good mix-up. Down tilt is your fastest rumble tilt by far. Only being frame 6, minus 6 on shield, making it a really solid pressure tool. It goes out incredibly far for a down tilt. It's special cancelable, it can chain into itself, it can link into itself, and it can go into other moves. Your jabs, like your jabs, tilts, and down smash. It's pretty damn good. You can link into down tilt up to three times, making it really, really good for hit confirming into it. Overall, top tier button. Use it a lot. Next up, we have F Tilt, which is by far one of Terry's most busted moves in his kit. This move by, by itself is incredibly good since the length is fully invincible during the active frames, which, is, which means a couple of things. For one, it's entirely possible to hit other characters' lower hitting moves, and for two, it's it becomes one of your most versatile tools in neutral due to it being able to use that approaching burst option, shield pressure tool, or a rewarding whiff punishment tool due to the move having a sweet spot on the foot. It can make your poking game just more deadlier. Let them know that bullies get the boot. 
This is also special comfortable, being plus 11 on shield, being your highest advantage on shield. But I'll go over that later in another video. Hey, come on, come on. Up to is what you expect. A move that hits primarily above and in front of Terry, but it's a lackluster anti -air and a very niche move that most Terry players won't be using a lot. Its main usage is as a combo extension. From down tilt to confirm into higher damage specials, commonly being crack shoot or power gazer. And the benefits of cancelling plus 10 really helps. But be warned that this move requires a lot of positioning to actually properly work on hit and on shield. Now on to smash attacks, starting off with the worst. F smash is your typical high risk, high reward smashes, which can be really good, a really good call out. And because it is considered airborne, on release, you can hit a, a lot of opponents out of their moves with this. But otherwise, don't use it, this, this move kinda sucks. Terry's up smash is one of your better anti airs which is something that Terry is awfully lacking. Hitting on frame 10, his up smash is actually really good out of shield, especially because Terry crouches frame 1 out of the animation so he can avoid a lot of approaching aerials and beat out whatever move is hitting his shield. You can also turn it around by dropping the shield for a frame or two then immediately up smashing to autocorrect the attack. It kills pretty early if you hit the anti-air portion of the attack, and after down to it, you can actually chase rolls or air dodges straight after if you can come out of rain too. So this makes it a really good like reversal move. As down smashes go in this game, Terry has one of the best with his his shooting out super duper far and comes out crazy fast at frame 7. His whiff punish capabilities is really damn good since the move is extremely disjointed so opponents committing to a dash in or short hop towards him will definitely get the boot. Though you won't see it all the time in combo, as there are way better combo hits that Terry can take. However, there are situations where the opponent can't get hit by any other normal. Say they are a bit out of reach for F2, or they are crouching themselves. So, instead, it's really good for it in that situation. Hey, come on, come on! Dash attack is one of Terry's many fantastic burst options. It's the fastest active hitbox at frame 10. Since it doesn't require a special input, usually mainly being used to cover landings and defensive options to confirm kills. With an amazing hitbox covering you for 12 frames. Additionally, it can also be used to bypass a lot of projectiles to blow through them, including Joku Saibi and Young Lin's arrows. In shield pressure as a mix-up, Terry can cross up shields with the right amount of distance, which makes it a very hard move to deal with like shield, with it requiring a lot of awareness from your opponent. Alrighty, we're halfway done, but not down and out just yet. Now let's get on to aerial attacks. Nair is a part of what I like to call the holy trinity of aerial normals. We'll call this one the sun. This comes out extremely fast, frame 4 to be exact, and is special cancelable. The move hits pretty far below Terry and is active for 15 long frames. 
which can be used off stage to go for a special cancel that can kill ridiculously early. It's really good at being a tomahawk, as you can go deep into your DR and press it on the last possible frame to be more positive and sure, and it can potentially cross up. On taller characters, you can use this as an instant shield pose, and against everyone, you can use this as a really good air to air. This is your equivalent to down tilt in the air. There is the next in the Holy Trinity, the Father. This is one of your best landing options, having the lowest angle out of all of your aerial moves. Hitting further below you, which makes it harder for the opponent to meet you in the air. So it's really good as a challenging rising area. From a shore hop, it can also be auto cancelled to get some nice follow-ups from jabs and tilts. It can also be used as a retreating option by holding forwards with the C stick and holding back with the analog stick, giving you more air time and maximum drift to keep your opponent at bay. Up air comes out on frame 7 and it's a whopping minus 3 on block, making it your safest jump in. But because it's only active for 3 frames and the hitbox hits more vertical than horizontal, it isn't really practical in neutral. That no way means you shouldn't use it. It's mainly used for picking up follow-ups from juggles and meeting someone in the air. It's a really solid call-out for empty hopping, and as a mid knee trick, you can also use it by holding down on the analog stick, whilst I'm inputting up air with the C-stick, making you doing an automatic falling, fast falling up air, which also helps with doing a rising tackle. Down air is the third in the Holy Trinity of Aerial. I call this one the Holy Fuck How Do I Deal With This Move. This thing is ridiculous. It's fuck beyond belief. Hitbox is huge. It recesses your earthbox and is only minus 10 on shield. Which is really good by, by itself by the way. But then you just realize he could just drift back with it. To a safe position. <laughs> and oh yeah. Special cancelling it makes it plus 6 on shield, by the way. So they just can't do anything about it. They just have to hold that mix. And <laughs> if they don't have a decent enough anti-air reversal, there is nothing stopping you from just throwing out this move. So what are you waiting for? Just do it! Just do it! Finally, we round off his aerial normals with back air. It's a fantastic anti-air mainly due to its frame data and hitbox. If you have a keen eye, you may realize that it looks similar to Wolves, which you might be correct, since it has better frame data and also like starts up much faster. It's practically the same move. <laughs> it's, it's balanced due to the fact you have to bar it, but every time you have to do that, it doesn't really matter, since the move is extremely busted. Use it a lot. In this section, we'll be talking about everything that isn't a ball, which is including universal mechanics, grabs, and special moves. For special moves, specifically the inputs, I'll be addressing them as directional inputs to make it much more simpler for everyone to understand. Uh, so for example, burn knuckle will be for the circle forwards and such. Terry has two important grab variations and four different grab options at his disposal. His static grab is pretty good due to his speed coming out of frame 6, and the above average range complements it super well. Since both down tilt and grab come out of about the same exact frame, so it becomes a tick throw setup to confirm into itself. Also, if you're running and want to get a standing grab, you can hold down and grab at the same exact time to get it to become a running grab. 
Dash grabs are a burst option that reaches pretty far, but puts you in a significant amount of lag, and they have a lot of startup. This is only ideal if you condition shield. Now for the grab follow ups. We'll start with forward throw and back throw, since these moves are practically identical. Throwing with either forward throw or back throw will have Terry slam the opponent to the ground and launching them in the direction he's throwing in. To be honest, this throw is, <laughs> isn't really useful as you give up so much advantage that Terry has to work for so hard to get anyway. So I'd only go for this if you're trying to potentially tech chase or throw them into the corner. His down throw launches his opponents above him, which sets up for follow-up combos. Depending on the opponent's DI, Terry can go for Nair or up air to pursue a opponent. On, on platforms, this can set up for tech chases that can lead to big boy damage. Though this throw is heavily DIable behind Terry, so watch out. Up throw is the black sheep of Terry's throws, as its only true purpose is to counterattack the DI mix-up from down throw. This throw also can be a setup for tech chases on high platforms and can keep your opponent in the air. But Dark, where is this mysterious fourth throw? You, you may be asking. Well, it's the where's my lunch money pummels you've been doing, you bully. This throw option can be mashed to do more damage and helps unstale your moves. Depending on the character, and if they are mashing jump, you'll get two outcomes. That being a air or grounded ground reset. The air one is the most universal option. After releasing as your opponent will flip out and this can lead to some nice aerial mix-ups to chase your opponent in the air. The grounded release leaves your opponent neutral in your face, which leaves you in a perfect position to actually get a quick jab follow-up or shield pressure string going and is one of the many ways that Terry can keep his turn. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's talk about special moves. Starting off with Power Wave. Power Wave is done by just tapping or holding the special move button to get different strengths. The light version runs along the ground at a slower pace, mostly being used for follow-ups, approaches, and, and set play on the opponent's tech chase, and shield pressure to hit their toes. The heavy version comes out 3 frames later, but travels out extremely fast and far, giving you more full-screen presence. Use this as a defensive method of giving yourself full-screen presence and to keep your opponent at bay. This move also has an air extension move, dubbed Airwave. It's actually one of your furthest hitting normals, making it a fantastic whip punishing tool. It's quite active, so it can beat out a lot of approaches in CQC situations. It eats a lot of smaller projectiles like um, Shaku and Mega Man's melons. When you're actually in the air with this thing, you can actually halt your momentum and stall for one use, after which you'll fall like a lunatic skin. It's good for repositioning yourself off stage to mix up your recovery. Burn Knuckle is next in the list of special moves. This move propels Terry forwards and is the first special move with inputs attached to it. Done by doing quarter circle forwards plus special or attack. Starting on frame 15 for light and 21 for heavy. These moves are extremely active and covers everything in front of Terry and has a few frames of invincibility of the arms, making it hard to whiff punish. Terry also floats above the ground, so it can actually be used to go over a lot of lower hitting moves, like down tilts. This move will lose you games if you're not too careful. It can be used very sparingly as a surprise anti-air, and can be used as a solid whip punishing tool. 
though, it, if your opponent actually catches on, you're gonna be eating a fat ass punish for your troubles. I will address that if you spaced the night version on shield with the tip of the, the fist, you can actually make it minus 14 instead of minus 25, which helps in a lot of matches and makes it easier in the whiff punishing game. In the air, it's a fantastic cooldown on jumpers and has the least amount of lag with the light burner, making it able to be actionable out of that. Let's flip over to Crack Shoot! This is performed by doing a quarter circle back plus special. This flip kick is able to pop over projectile for zone breaking, but what you really want to be using it for is approaching and for pressure. The light version actually connects easier into itself, but the heavy pressure hits further and has a stronger hitbox at the tip, which can potentially shield break with the right amount of spacing. When blocked, this move is extremely hard to punish, as it can cross up the opponent's shield. It's also a fantastic anti-air, covering his whole entire body, so a lot of normals simply can't land on top of it. Power Dunk literally does everything for you, and is what you see 80% of the game. You get this move by doing a Dragon Punch motion, which is 6-2-3 for you nerds. Starting off on frame 6, this move has invincibility during the rising portion of the attack, which is helpful for catching jumps and going through attacks as a reversal. Power Dunk is also great for whipping, as when you auto cancel the landing rate of the move, you can act immediately after. When the move lifts on hit, it also allows you to buffer other moves during the animation, leading to some pretty cheeky resets. But be warned, as this move is extremely easy to SDI and be punished on landing. It's also very easy to tell where you're going to be landing if you keep using the heavy version. So keep mixing up what version you use. I'll discuss more about this on recoveries in part 2. Rising Tackle is your true blue anti-air reversal, done by pressing up and B, or charging down for a few frames, then holding up the reaction button at the same time for the input button, granting you full body invincibility on start. Then the legs, then a big old headbox. On stage, it's generally used as an alternative to your jab ender on center stage, and is one of your hard reading moves. It's amazingly powerful to see it stops at the top of the stage, but if you lift this move in neutral, you can kiss those sweet stocks goodbye. Honestly, use this fairly That's all for special moves, but now it's on to the final stretch. It's go time! Power Gazer is a 20 frame super special move done by doing quarter cycle back, then forwards with the action button. Very powerful ground, causing a key based explosion to pull the power gate that covers everything to Sunday. This thing is huge, downright the biggest anti air I've ever seen. This combo ender is actually one of the better anti airs. During the startup, it has 5 frames of damage based armor from frame 1 meaning that you can cancel into this and potentially whip punish a multi hit or a weak hitting move. And it lasts for 14 frames, doing some nice damage. With great power comes another go move. And now, for the age of the question, are you kidding? BUST THE WALL! If Power Gazer controls the skies, this move controls the ground. It clears 60% of the stage and is, is fully armored from frame 1 to 15 with 8% base damage. Terry also leans back whilst performing this move, making it a really nightmarish CQC option. But of course, if you aren't careful, you will get punished. Thank you all for watching the first part of the Terry Guide. I decided to split it all up into three parts, as it will make the whole this whole thing more digestible. If I put this whole thing together, it will be extremely long, so the next video will be 
going on a g general game plan, his neutral tools, advantage state, and disadvantage state, and set play options. Part 3 will be going over matchups, extra resources and I that I've left out. Alrighty, I'll see you all in the next one. Deuces!